In 1959, the first meeting was held to consider the possibility of starting an Episcopal mission on Key Biscayne, and by December, the charter signed by 49 members was presented to the diocese. Soon after the first service was held on Christmas Day 1959 in the Little Island Playhouse on a coconut plantation track to a full house of 96 people. And it was appropriate that that very evening the first baptized child at St. Christopher's by the sea was young Christopher Prim. By February 1960, the generous Hardy Matheson offered an empty building to the budding mission for church use, and the members rolled up their sleeves and went to work, rebuilding the charming chapel in the woods. And so began St. Christopher's place in the vibrant island community of Key Biscayne, a commitment to the nurturing of the island youth always at the forefront. St. Christopher's presence was always noticed in many community events, and so for seven years the work of the founders kept moving forward as they started a building fund for the construction of a permanent home. The diocese purchased the land, and by 1967, the church on 95 Harbor Drive was erected with an adjoining parish hall, which would also serve as one of the first Montessori schools in South Florida. The commitment of those first members of St. Christopher's to deliver a quality Montessori education was so absolute that they hired Dr. Elizabeth Caspari, a Swiss educator who was an associate of Dr. Maria Montessori herself, to deliver a lecture on Montessori education to the residents of Key Biscayne in the summer of 68, right before the first fall admission. The 70s were a time of enjoyment and growth as St. Christopher's continued to encourage youth participation in field trips to familiar Key Biscayne hotspots. Life was fun and carefree, and St. Christopher's continued to be a home to many. As time went on, the need for additional space became obvious to the members of St. Christopher's, so another fundraising effort yielded the groundbreaking of the Parish Hall in 1982. Members who had been committed since the birth of the church continued to work and the new hall was built, freeing up the old hall to be solely used as a preschool. 1992 brought the home destroyer known as Hurricane Andrew onto the shores of Key Biscayne with a whopping punch. No property, including St. Christopher's by the sea, was spared, but St. Christopher's members rallied. Even as their own home sustained damage, they came to St. Christopher's and cleaned up the mess and kept on moving forward. The rest of the 90s was laced with hope, prosperity, and growth. The Little Montessori School at St. Christopher's by the Sea had shown significant increases in enrollment with the addition of an elementary program housed in a partitioned section of the parish hall. The word was out and St. Christopher's was the place to be. An enthusiastic capital campaign began and by 2001, the elementary building was erected for a lower and upper elementary. It wasn't long before the student body once again outgrew the existing space and the modular was brought in as a temporary solution to house the upper elementary in 2007. In recent years, much more has been moved and rearranged to make space for continued growth. In the summer of 2014, a move to increase the learning spaces brought renovations once again. The offices were moved to the executive building behind the property and the expanded space created allowed for a dedicated room for enrichment programming like music and art. A pilot toddler program was begun in 2015 and spaces were once again rearranged to allow for growth. Today we are at the precipice of the next stage. The bedrock of this vibrant church and school community has been its commitment to growth and the understanding that the work must continue. The faces of today's students are the faces of tomorrow's leaders. It continues to be our work to nurture them and provide them the best possible place to learn and become all that God wants them to be. An apparent need to relocate the offices back to the property and remove the modular has increased the need for additional learning and administrative spaces. Consultations with architects have begun and the future looks bright. Your commitment is needed as we work towards an even brighter tomorrow.